Welcome to Personal Protective Equipment and Assessments. I will be your instructor for this course and my name is Marcus Wiesaw. My contact information is listed on the screen so if you have any questions feel free to send me a quick email or just call me directly. Let's discuss the PPE and assessment objectives. There are three prime objectives I want you to be able to accomplish as we move through this course. The first is I want you to be able to list the categories or types of personal protective equipment. Secondly, I'd like you to explain the OSHA hierarchy of control measures. And lastly, I want you to understand the general process of conducting a personal protective equipment assessment. Let's begin our conversation on PPE and assessments with the hierarchy of control measures. Now there are three. There is engineering control measures, administrative or work practice control measures, and control measures related to personal protective equipment. The way to think about this is to rank your favorite sports team or think about a number one school or uh, something like that. Now engineering control measures are things like ventilation or implementing standard guardrails and are at the top of the list. So this is number one. So every employer is uh, required to look through engineering control measures to reduce, substitute, or eliminate hazards with engineering first and foremost. And so what we find out a lot is that many companies, many management teams will actually put more emphasis upon personal protective equipment than on the appropriate engineering control methods and that's not how uh, we are required to eliminate hazards. And so an example again is ventilation standard guardrail systems uh, and there are many other types of engineering control measures that we would take as well. For example machine guarding. Secondly if you look at administration and work practice control measures these are simple. They can be signs, placards, policies, having employees work in different shifts so they don't get too much exposure to, say, a chemical or have too much noise exposure. There are a lot of different things that we can do administratively in order to minimize or lower the exposure uh, of employees to certain hazards of the workplace. And finally, after we've done engineering control measures and done what we have uh, been able to do there, and then we've implement, implemented appropriate administration and work practice controls, then we can move on to personal protective equipment. And if you've been in the work workplace for a while, then you already understand that PPE is often required in many uh, vocations. And if you're newer, uh, PPE can be anything that protects you from hazards of the workplace, such as a respirator to protect you from breathing in harmful particulates, fall protection to help you uh, minimize the shock of a fall, uh, if you should fall, gloves, hard hats, steel toed boots are all other examples. Okay. Well, one thing I want to really stress here is that we don't get PPE right in in almost any industry because we forget that it kind of bogs uh, our employees down and it's uncomfortable uh, a lot of people don't wear it right and it's unreliable and it's not as effective as other types of control measures like engineering and administration however one thing I want to add as well to that uh, little tidbit is that PPE assessments are frequently not conducted either on top of ignoring engineering and administrative or work practice control measures. And so more on the importance of PPE assessments later on in the course, but for now keep that on the back burner because we're going to come back to it. I want to discuss with you just the categories of personal protective equipment and there's kind of a long list here, and I don't want you to get intimidated. I really don't. But let's go over them. Uh, fire retardant clothing. Uh, in the petrochemical industry or the electrical industry, you may be required to wear FRCs. Now, fire retardant clothes 
are going to prevent uh, uh, clo it's clothing that self extinguishes when you remove a flame so it's not going to prevent a fire from happening it's not going to prevent you from being burned it just self extinguishes when you remove the ignition source and fall protection is another category of personal protective equipment that uh, is kind of uh, going to include that whole family of um, of equipment for example harnesses lanyards etc respiratory protection is going to include APRs and SARS or air purifying respirators and supplied air respirators which are the two subcategories of respiratory protection we have eye protection like safety goggles we have face uh, face protection uh, such as a face shield we have hand protection like leather gloves work gloves cotton gloves foot protection which is going to be usually a steel toed boot or metatarsal foot guards hearing protection like muffs caps earplugs body protection like chemical protective equipment or chemical protective clothing and aprons and head protection like a bump cap or a hard hat so keep these in mind uh, these categories of personal protective equipment are pretty easy when you look at your body and just kind of put everything into perspective so you're breathing in you recognize that well there's respiratory protection you look at your hands you look at your eyes your face and so just look at your body and say what can I protect and a lot of these categories will come right to you and so here's some examples basically of PPE and use you see some hard hats there you see some gloves and you see a little painters dust mask being used in the center uh, as respiratory protection one thing I want to em emphasize here during this course is that the employer is supposed to pick up the cost for PPE and so that means that the personal protective equipment is usually free to employees except for specific items and what I'm going to do is give you just a list here of known uh, personal protective equipment that the employer can require employees to have but does not have to pay for safety safety toe footwear or steel toed boots prescription safety eyewear uh, everyday clothing and weather related gear and logging boots so typically the two biggest that we see arguments over in the industry are safety safety toed boots or steel toed boots and prescription eyeglasses because a lot of employees don't want to, to buy them or, or wear them uh, especially in certain cases um, where it's absolutely essential and so we have seen some legal lawsuits arise over time and there is a good precedent in the courts where uh, the courts have upheld that employees will pick up the costs of steel toed boots and prescription safety eyewear logging boots and and everyday clothing and weather related gear is a little bit different uh, depending upon where you're at and what the views uh, of that location are but in general employees can expect to pay for these uh, these items all right so one thing that i want to emphasize as we wrap up part one of ppe and assessments is that employers must protect employees from workplace hazards such as machines, hazardous substances, and dangerous work practices that can cause injury. Employers must use all feasible engineering and work practice controls first to eliminate, substitute, or reduce hazards. And then, after we've went through those measures, we can ask employees to wear personal protective equipment at that point. I can't stress this enough. Remember, personal protective equipment is the last level of control measure that we can implement. It's ranked last, okay? Engineering, administrative and work practices, and then PPE is how the hierarchy of control measures really works. And so, if you have any questions or need to discuss this in more depth, I am available and we can discuss any questions you have via email or over the telephone. I hope you have a great day and take it easy.